Hey everybody, it's Gomladax, and welcome back to another premiere draft of Modern Horizons 3. Without further ado, let's get into the pack one, pick one. Very simple, Rhythen Chrysalis is in the top three best cards in the entire format. It is better than every single card except for one rare and one mythic, and neither of those cards are in this pack. So you just take Chrysalis. Now there are really good other options, Glyph Elemental and Static Prison being my favorite monocolored options here. And I don't think it would be insane to take one of those just because they're monocolored instead of two colored. So they are definitely tying us into less restrictive of a deck, but I think Chrysalis is just so good, you just take it. The bane of the format. For pick two, we get past an incredible blue-black rare. So I could see a universe where the player out of this pack took a chrysalis of their own and we're immediately fighting them over red green but they're gonna pass us all the blue black i mean it's a great sign if they passed us a psychic frog probably the literal best blue black card uh that they're gonna pass us more blue and black stuff so we take a psychic frog here if we can wheel the sneaky snacker then that would be just all gas no brakes never look back full on Lock to blue-black, but for now, we're going to feel things out, have one incredibly powerful blue-black card, one incredibly powerful red-green card. We're going to give a little more weight to the blue-black one, though, since it was passed to us instead of just opened. And for pick three, off of the incredible blue-black card that got passed to us, we take Sneaky Snacker over just a reasonable card to go with Chrysalis, be it the Glimpse, the Impossible, or the Brood Scale. I think the Glimpse is probably a little better giving you so many spawn there to go with Chrysalis, but Snacker, I think, is the best pick here, seeing that we are going to be fed from the player on our right. Plenty of blue-black options, it looks like, at this rate. And if we are just going to be past all of the great Demir cards by the player on our right, that's kind of perfect, because we didn't even get punished by our pack one pick one, because if we didn't take Chrysalis, we were just going to take a white card anyway. We weren't going to take anything that would have went into a blue-black deck. So that has gone pretty dang well for us. Serum Visionary is a little bit weaker than Galvanic Discharge. But when we have both Psychic Frog and Sneaky Snacker, we certainly take the Visionary over that. It stacks really well with anything that draws a card and discards a card during your turn or like triggers one card draw like the Psychic Frog because then like if I hit my opponent with a Psychic Frog and play a Serum Visionary, I've drawn two extra cards during my turn. So I've drawn three cards total, which means that I reanimate Sneaky Snacker and stuff like that. So I think Visionary plays really well in this archetype. Although Transmigrant does too. This archetype's really good at discarding cards to draw cards and sacrificing creatures for value. Um, so that's a reasonable option, and Corruption as well is also good, but having that many swamps to make it super, super good, not that easy in this format. Um, even if you're a dedicated two-color deck, it's just okay, and a lot of the times you do, like, splash in a third. Um, Blue-Black does not have the most energy synergies in the world, so Cartographer is not going to be excellent, but it can be solid. Harvester is usually pretty consistently good, because even if you just draw a card, discard a card twice off this thing, drawing and discarding a Sneaky Snacker is excellent, and obviously using your Harvester plus getting an Enter the Battlefield effect of a, from a Visionary is immediately going to trigger all the draw two cards. But that Corruption is again also an option. A little slower, but it does clear out a small creature and gain some life. I'm just going to go for the Corruption here over those and here's a scurrilous sentry i like this better than the tempest harvester because it gives you the same ability of drawing a card and discarding a card every turn but it's going to do that while getting your evasive threat to beat down so very big fan of scurrilous sentry here well if we did take the uh the energy card that we saw earlier we could grab the tune the narrative to go with it here that's uh what was it cartographer i think is the name a Cursed Marauder is a pretty easy card to scoop up here. Competing with Contaminated Landscape, which is reasonable. We are just going to be a two-color deck, more likely than not, so we don't really need these for fixing, but we are going to have like double black costs and stuff, so being able to search out the swamp when we need it or the island when we need it is fine. I think Marauder is good enough in this archetype, though. This is my favorite archetype for the Marauder because you can sacrifice your Sneaky Snackers that just come back later anyway. 
All right, and there's Unfathomable Truths. Beautiful card for this deck. Allows you to trigger all of your draw three cards at instant speed during your opponent's turn. And it's just a huge amount of card draw in general. Pick nine, we just take the best card regardless of color. Pick ten, we did not wheel the Sneaky Snacker, so we are going to be competing for this color pair. But Psychic Frog makes it incredibly worth it. And Psychic Frog also makes Grim Servants pretty interesting here. Because if we have just one other black permanence on board, we can tutor up a mana value two or less card when we play Grim Servant, which includes Psychic Frog, a strong enough card that is certainly worth tutoring up. So in blue-black, I don't love Utter Insignificance, because black usually has plenty of good removal. I don't have a ton right now, but I feel like Gravedig might be, end up being better than Utter Insignificance in here if we get like just one more Psychic Frog-style card that's just a super high-quality creature that ends up in the grave later, then Gravedig could be a huge deal. Right now, I don't think I quite want to run it, but I also don't really want to run Utter Insignificance, ideally, when black is my secondary color. So pack two, pick one. Pretty... Weak pack all around. This is the best archetype for Shadow of the Second Sun, because we're going to have a lot of instant speed things we can do with that leftover mana, plus this is guaranteeing two draw steps in our turn. So we draw once at the start of our turn and once at the very end. So we only have to draw a single extra card during our turn to trigger all of our draw threes. I guess we take this Shadow. I don't love it because it's so much mana, but... It's certainly the best card for our deck out of that pack, and here's a perfect one. Mindless Conscription, so we can build a gigantic zombie army pretty easily. We'll take that, and maybe we can get back a Tune the Narrative, or a Corruption, or a Gargantua. That's very sweet options. Now we can take a blue-black fetch land over literally nothing. And we can grab... Nothing much here. I guess we just take a Dream Drinker Vampire. This is like an okay archetype for Victimize, because you can discard cards to your Scurrilous Sentries and your Aether Harvesters, but then we also have to spend picks on like really high mana value creatures to discard to reanimate, which I don't really like doing. I think I'd rather take Dream Drinker Vampire than Victimize. Curve out with a little Life Linker. Uh, pick five. I guess the Kami holds people off. It's probably better than a second Grave Dig. Yeah, we're not really getting fed super well from this direction. Actually, Tune the Narrative's probably decent. Just another draw one to try to stack up with another one towards uh, a draw three trigger. I did pass a landscape, but again, two color deck. It's kind of whatever. So yeah, this direction getting passed from the left, not working super well for us. So we're going to get some weaker inclusions to the deck out of this pack, but pick three, we'll get passed from the same player that we were passed from in pack one, and that should be where we really get loaded up here. So I really don't like having to shoot myself every single time I tap for mana. So we might end up cutting this, but the threshold ability is really good for a draw three deck. So it's an interesting option. If this were best of three draft, I'd be really happy with this pick, because then we just side it in in slower matchups where our life total's not that relevant. But if we end up having this in our opening hand against an aggro deck, then like having this end up shooting us for four or five throughout the game is pretty deadly. So I might not main deck it. Again, the threshold ability is really, really good, but it's a high cost for it. Another Consuming Corruption. I'm actually starting to really like that here because we're deeper into black than blue. So we can try to run like a 9-7 split, 9 swamps, 7 islands, and a fetch. Let's see how many I own. Alright, we've got a full collection. If you're ever in a draft and you need to see how many you own, if you are on PC, you can hold down the Alt key. I don't think there's any way to check how many you have in your collection on mobile, though. Alright, already own it all. Let's spare draft the Uncommon to fill out that vault faster. Well, we obviously take the Uncommon over the basic there. 
All right, so we have 17 non-land playables. We need to find six cards that add to this deck. That should be easy enough. Amphibian Downpour is reasonable removal, but I think Deep Analysis is such an incredible synergy card for the deck that we take it here because it's going to trigger our draw three cards twice. Our Sneaky Snacker and our Mindless Corruption pop off with this thing. So I'm going to take Deep Analysis here over... Serum Visionary, which would be quite good. Downpour, which seems pretty good as well. Um, even Transmigrant would be okay here. Or Landscape. But Deep Analysis looks like actually perfect. Well, this was just a tragic pack to open up. Literally a single common has been taken out of this pack and there's just nothing. Yeah, that's just some poor card distribution for us. Unfortunate. This pack just didn't really have cards for our deck. We take a blue-black fetch land. Really surprised the player on our right is not on green here. Get past an Antuco and an Altasaur, but that's okay. We've got double landscape towards the emerge cost on Riddle Keeper, and if we can do that sacking a Sneaky Snacker... Then this will be an excellent finisher. Even at 8 mana, the card's quite strong, but it's pretty hard for us to make it all the way up to 8 mana. I think it's still a reasonable addition for this deck, even if it's not great. Pick 4, another deep analysis is pretty perfect yet again. We take that over Gravedig or Creation of Avacyn. Wow. Yeah, we ended up just getting loaded on the green cards here somehow. I did not see a lot of great green signals pack one, but pack two and three. Now Path of Annihilation, we got a green rare last pack. This rare does literally nothing, but... Um, but still. There's been other great green cards kind of flying around here. Yeah, this is wild. The Territory Color's still in there. Fanged Flames. How did... The whole pod like pivot on the blue black here after passing a psychic frog i mean well only one player passed the psychic frog so i guess the player directly to their right could be in blue black but if the player that passed a psychic frog ended up pivoting into blue black i'm gonna be really mad at them i will hunt them down to the ends of the earth all right another scurrilous sentry over another eight drop for sure Now, um, double spike. Oh, what is Marauder doing over here? Um, double corruption. I guess because Marauder is basically a removal spell too. Yeah, double spike, double corruption, Marauder. I don't think I need interaction that badly, but I also don't think Kami's super good here. So I'll play an utter insignificance in here. Definitely play a Tempest Harvester. Yeah, play that over a Kami. There's a Transmigrant to go with our draw and discard, our Harvester and our Double Sentry. It also goes with our, our Marauder here. So that's good. Start Rare Drafting in the end. I'm going to cut this Colosseum here because I really hate that against anything somewhat aggressive. Okay, so one last cut from the deck here. Didn't end up with a ton of great cards to pick up with the Gravedig, just the one Psychic Frog, really. But Gravedig is still fine when we're like drawing and discarding so much, but I don't know. Doesn't seem great. I do like the tune, the narrative here with um, all of our draw one, discard one, just as a little bump in the amount of card draw we have to get us through that hurdle of drawing a third card when we have conscription or snacker around so yeah i'll just cut a grave dig call it a deck here and uh get ready to hop in the gameplay we do have considerably more black spells than blue spells as well as double double black cards that want as many swamps as possible i'm gonna go nine six here and these are both blue black landscapes i will keep them both they're going to make it so we can emerge the Riddle Keeper every now and then. 
and they're also going to make it so we can tutor up an island or swamp whenever we need it, which is actually pretty nice in this deck, because the majority of the time, if we have no island at all, then we'll crack a landscape for blue, but in any other position, we would rather just load up on swamps so that we can get the corruptions really spinning here. Yeah, I think the landscapes are actually pretty solid in here. Even if we didn't have the Riddle Keeper, they'd be reasonable because of the double corruption. So yeah, looks like a very solid blue-black card draw deck. We'll see how it all plays out for us as we hop into the gameplay. All right, here we are on the play with a very reasonable start. I actually should have played the Swamp, so I technically have Corruption up turn two in case they played like a one-mana Bomb Rare and I top decked a Swamp. But that didn't happen. Do I want to Aether Spike a two-drop? No. We'd rather get Snacker down. And we've got a really good excuse to hold it up next turn because I have nothing to play next turn anyway. Oh! Swamp. Swamp. All right, well. Rip. The odds of their two-mana play being a lot better than their three-mana play were pretty low, but it is what it is. We can still corruption it later. Potentially. Oh! <laughs> their two mana play isn't even that much better than the three mana play. And we have a massive issue here where if I counter this, they can reanimate it with the Emperor and just hit me for 11 damage next turn. Unless I top deck exactly a swamp. Oh my god. This is so bad no matter what I do. Like, if I don't hit it, I'm also getting hit for, like, 11. I'm just going to pray for a swamp off the top. Come on. Come on, RNGs. Jesus. I got eight more swamps in here. Oh, thank you so much. Our opponent would have been buying lottery tickets if that panned out for them. And be like, oh my god, I just get this. Swing for 11. I feel like we just set up some Skirtless Sentries here and just keep getting in with Evasive Threats. Plus, I've got a great card to discard to a Sentry. Setting up a draw 3 for only 2 mana. Technically a draw 2, but if you draw 2 during your turn, that's enough. Alright, Flare of Denial is whatever. That is A-OK. -okay. Um, but yeah, if we Sentry and discard a Deep Analysis, that sets up to play Conscription and Deep Analysis in the same turn by flashing it back. Once we have a fifth mana, it'd be pretty beautiful. Speaking of pretty beautiful, Depth Defiler is an incredible card. They are going to go for the draw two, discard one, and have a really thick blocker on the ground. It's got that dump truck attached, but that's okay because we have Menace and Flying. Uh-oh. I do need to draw one more mana for the discard deep analysis to be super, super good here. So that I can conscription and deep in the same turn. Uh-oh. Got a Kami, so if they ever draw three in one turn, they're draining us for life at the same time. We absolutely attack first with the Snacker, so that if they trade... If we trade Snackers here, then we just bring ours right back. Um, with Deep Analysis. I think I attack with Sentry 2. It just ends up trading into the Death Toucher. Which isn't... Super exciting. Not really blocking anyway. And I can discard another Deep Analysis. To see what else we find. Mm. With that draw, I wish I played the Swamp pre-combat here, because we could have killed the Kami. That would have been really good. Oh, if this is the way they block, actually, then we're still fine with the Corruption. No draw three necessary this turn, because the Snacker is still alive anyway. Boom. Actually plays out perfectly fine. Sentry is still around for another turn. We just play the Conscription, then. I guess the one flaw with this is now the Death Toucher gets to trade into our 6-6 instead of our Menacer. 
but we can just play it out differently where we deep analysis post combat. So if they do trade the Death Toucher into the army, then we just replace the army instead of making like one really big threat to trade Death Touch into. Really happy with this position. Kind of no matter how we play it out, there's a lot of different options that are all pretty reasonable here. Alright, our opponent does some digging with Eviscerator's Insight, gets back a tapped Snacker while they're at it. There's the Idol of the False Gods. That is infinite Trump Blockers. It costs them two mana a turn to make those Trump Blockers, but it's quite good. You can find a Colorless Source for this Riddle Keeper. That'd be sick, and they don't have a Death Toucher, so deep analysis pre-combat towards the 6-6 army is quite nice. Swamp, Swamp, so still no colorless source. One, two, three, four, five. This is land six out of eight. I think I'd rather play a Harvester than another deep analysis here, but we can also wait till after we attack to see what options we open up. No options. Or the same options, however you want to say it. Okay, so chump the six and take six. They're at four life now. It's a rough position over there. And we go for more power on the board. There's Tempest Harvester. Create a spawn. Insight the Snacker, bring it back tapped. Still trying to dig for some answers to this board state. And they cannot find them. We start off 1-0, taking down the mirror match. Well, there's our crazy frog turn two. Just go for it. Tons of removal. So if they can't just removal spell the frog immediately, we can clear a path for it and just draw all game long. I'll play the swamp first, just on the off chance we're in the universe where we want a corruption turn to. Actually, if we were in that universe, I should have just landscaped for black immediately and then played the untapped island and then I have double black for corruption ready. Yeah, no, that was a much better line. Because we only have one card in this deck that actually cares about colorless mana. So cracking the landscape is not a downside at all. We should have cracked it. That guarantees we have double black by the time we might need it, which would be turn three. But this way, if we don't draw a natural black source, we don't actually have corruption up this turn. Um, and that could be bad. All right. Our opponent's blocks are horrific, and not blocking is also horrific. Okay. We'll take it. Probably a corruption here. This part's a slightly hard choice. I'm actually gonna discard corruption, you know. I guess they do technically get a two for one trade there. They got rid of our corruption and our deep analysis, but because deep analysis is even cheaper in the graveyard and still puts us up a card, um, the flashback just works so well there, it's still worth it. All right. I don't know if it's better to hold this swamp to be able to discard the Psychic Frog in case they have damage based removal, or if it's better to um, play the land so I have Corruption up. It's probably better to play the land so I have Corruption up, but we're also definitely deep analysing for Conscription. Yeah, that's huge. And then I also have Corruption up, and I have excellent options of what to discard. Sick. All right, well, our opponent is in a horrific position now.
Actually, I think Sneaky Snacker was our... We drew Sneaky Snacker alongside the Harvester, so I don't think I could have discarded it and re immediately reanimated it, but maybe I could have. Because it was a draw two spell. Did we have an opportunity to discard it after I drew the first card, but before I drew the second? I don't think I can activate any abilities mid-draw two. So I don't think we actually could have reanimated the Snacker there. Doesn't matter, though. We were just insanely ahead, so... Um, yeah, just ridiculous game for us. We got the Frog, and they just can't do anything about it. If they had cheap removal, if they had, like, a Dog Umber here to put on the Frog, that would have been pretty bad for us. Discard two cards, and then the, the Frog is Umbred, but we still had great value plays to make up for that because we have so much card drawn this deck, so... Just really good stuff for us. The one big misplay was not just landscaping for black immediately. Turn one, that was a bad sequencing of lands there. But we are still 2-0 and o off the back of the Crazy Frog, heading into game three. All right, here we are for game three, playing the full control route this time. Spike something, turn two, spike something, turn three, draw two, and then draw... For the rest of the game with Shadow of the Second Sun, get way ahead in cards as long as we're not just dying on board. So hopefully we're not against white, the most aggressive color in the format. We are against green for now, and I'm going to try to get a lot of mileage out of double Aether Spike these first two turns. We are against green-white, pretty aggressive color pair. They can have like two mana, three threes and stuff, and lots of ways to put counters on them. Auras and equipments. Um, landscape for another black source here. I feel like our hand is slow enough. I can just immediately crack this landscape instead of trying to have the option open if we draw the eight drop, because we need to draw the eight drop and creatures to sack to it for that to really be interesting at all. Sure, let's just slow them down so that I can tap out for deep analysis next turn without getting hit. Play the second blue, make it easier to cast like two or three blue spells in one turn later if we need to. Uh, Sentry discard the other deep analysis looks pretty good here. Raven Charm's quite good against their deck, against our deck if they're running that. They get to exile both our deep analysis, and we're pretty sad. But this still feels like the best play. We're going to take four here. Go to 16, but we start cracking back with our evasive threats. We'll have all the man in the universe for instant speed stuff. We go down to 16. Okay, take a little more damage. We'll tune it up here, though. Find another sentry. Cute. Conscription. I can conscription analysis to have a 6-6 six, six up against this thing. If I tap out for Shadow of the Second Sun, I am taking 5 here. It's worded really, really weird, but at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, there's an additional beginning phase AFTER your post-combat main phase. So you don't untap all your lands until after you can play Sorcery. So we can't play this and expand our board. And I think we need to expand the board here rather than go down to 10. Force them to have more removal to get in. Because here's a 6-6 six, six to block the Guardian. This also helps us draw into one of our deal a bunch of damage, gain a bunch of life things quicker. We find one of those, it'll be excellent. We'll have the five swamps. 
And it's also instant speed, so those would be really good draws, because those we could cast the shadow, untap our lands, and then cast after the untap. Oh god, Dog Umber is so good against Conscription. Oh my god, that's, yeah, literally perfect against Conscription. Because I have to draw a way to sacrifice it to be able to make another army here. Ooh, that's bad. I don't actually think I have a way to sacrifice it. Because I can't sacrifice it to a Cursed Marauder. Wow, yeah, no, that hoses our army. Um, we don't have instants, so I can't just tap out for this and die to, like, plus two, plus two. We need to see what we can get off of this card draw. Do find Psychic Frog, which is huge. Boom, that's a big one. Consuming Corruption now. I think we get rid of the little vampire here. So we'll have a Consuming Corruption... Ready for next turn. Let's just have two blockers down here. And discard... Probably the landscape on this one. Next turn I can shadow... And hold up corruption. We didn't end up with any of the bounce removal in this deck, did we? The demon furiers? No, we didn't find any Demon Inferiors, so I can't even bounce the Dog Umbra to, like, lethal them with the army. Our Mindless Conscription's just completely blanked here, which is pretty sad. I do kind of need to not mill out. That's a slight concern. <laughs> But I think if we can just set up the Shadow of the Second Sun nonsense, we're drawing enough cards quickly enough, we put the board state pretty far in our favor and kill them before we're milling ourselves. It would be so much easier to do if we could just make a new army instead of this one. But we can't really do that unless I spend removal on my own army later on. Spend our utter insignificance on it. I would need to hit another colorless source to do that, though. Uh-oh. I actually need a third blue source to play the frog and the shadow here. That's a massive bummer. I guess maybe we should have been cracking for blue on that one. Remember... A modified creature dies manifest. It so it includes includes itself. If I kill the 5-5 five, five guardian, they get a 2-2 two, two replacement. So we kill the 4-4 four, four guardian. Tempest Harvester Trump this one for now, probably. Maybe Shadow and Deep Analysis can get me enough cards to make this Psychic Frog a massive flyer to outrace it. If we can draw our next Consuming Corruption, we're probably pretty safe. Gain another, like, five life here. Five or six. Oh, no. Lifelink of their own. There is no race. Oh boy. So, kind of all in on like Riddle Keeper at this point. Best draw. Sneaky Snacker's a really good one too. 
because we can keep reanimating that as sort of our endless trump blocker. Riddle Keeper is probably the best hit, though. The double tap. We're probably just never going to cast this shadow thing. I'm pretty sure here we're on deep analysis and snacker. I can attack with the sentry and then deep analysis. So I have a snacker in my grave to pick up, but then it will be tapped and I really want to chump with it here at 12 life. So I think I'm just hard casting snacker to have a chumper. Immediately. Grim servants. To lose three just by playing that, right? Yeah. It's painful. Probably worth it with Devotion 4. Actually, Devotion 3, I can pick up the lifelink removal. Yeah, the lifelink removal is actually worth it. Gain more life than we lose here. We clear out the Guardian, and they're down to just a 2-3. They do manifest a card, so it's actually a 2-3 and a 2-2. Two, two. Is there a green Hexproof trick? Uncommon. Oh. Alright. Yeah, there's no common that stops that there. For a green and one. I mean, maybe there's like a plus two, plus two or something, but I don't remember one at common. Well, that's a blowout. Uh, we can still go for like double blocks and stuff. Six life. I can't send the frog in right now. All right, that was gross. The fact that we drew servant so we didn't end up playing snacker is really awkward there. So we could have just had a 2-3 Fog and a tapped Snacker on board since we didn't end up casting it. But we didn't know what we were going to draw off of the deep analysis. A lot we can do there. If I set up a draw 3 next turn, um, I can still actually get it on the board untapped because the Shadow of the Second Sun untaps everybody. Maybe that's actually how we're using this card. We just want to untap everybody every turn. So that I can send in Menace Swings and still have all my blocks up. Or at least send in Flying with Psychic Frog. Yeah, Psychic Frog plus Shadow. That's draw two right there, so that's enough for Sneaky Snacker. If I just discard the Snacker to the Frog, exile some cards to give it Flying for the turn, I can send in with exclusively Psychic Frog, return the Sneaky Snacker, and then untap the Frog and the Snacker on blocks. Is six damage, so no matter how much I no matter how much I discard, it still dies. Right after the hexproof trick, where we would have gotten rid of the guardian. Could have still, I guess, discarded Snacker in response, but now the only way that I'm actually reanimating Snacker is if I attack with Sentry and play Shadow. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to afford to do that. Yeah, and that's big enough I have to chump it. Things have just lined up miserably for us. I mean, the Dog Umber alone was an absolute nightmare, but from then on, the Hexproof trick... Just... Perfectly imperfect for us. Actually... About as bad as possible. I guess... I was just talking about how we do untap everybody with the shadow, so we do send in the sentry. When they can't, like, double block kill it anyway. There's utter insignificance. That's a thing. No colorless source, but... We still make the Guardian a 3-3 with no abilities, which isn't enough, but... Something. Oh, 
Oh, I had to play this main phase one. I'm so dumb. Oh my god. I hate how this card is worded so much. Why does it trigger at the beginning of your post-combat main phase to give you an additional beginning phase after the... Why doesn't it just say... Enchanted player gets an extra beginning phase? Hmm, that's so frustrating. Well, we kind of just die for that. First time I read the card, I was like, oh, so it triggers at the beginning of your post-combat main phase. So you play at main phase one so that you can untap everything in your post-combat main phase and go crazy. And then second, and then once I actually played it, I was like, wait, no, it doesn't? It untaps everything at the end of your next main phase? Yes, it does. It untaps everything, giving you a second beginning phase at the very end of your turn. But if you cast it during your post-combat main phase, it doesn't. I hate this card with a passion, but we were losing this game regardless. We just would have still had a chance here, so whatever. <laughs> we're moving on. All right, here we are for game number five. We're two and one right now. And I'm just going to stare at this card and be really irritated that it doesn't trigger at the end of your post-combat main phase for some reason. I still don't know why on earth. If you don't get the beginning step until after your post-combat main phase anyway, why doesn't it just trigger at the end of your post-combat main phase? Or at the beginning of your end step or something? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Magic cards are dumb sometimes. Ooh, opponent kept a two-lander? Missed? Yeah, blue-green deck, kept a two-lander and missed, and now we just jam for six. Let's go. Big army. And I can deep analysis next turn and attack for nine if they don't kill this. Yeah, that, I mean, it's literally just game. Well... That wasn't really a game of magic. Our opponent just got really punished for their two lander keep. Now we are three and one heading into game five. All right, we're on the play with turn two Psychic Frog. Love to see it. I've got one card I'd love to discard here. <laughs> and a flashback spell that's also great to discard. So loving this. Let's go Psychic Frog. I keep forgetting to play Swamps first. We're supposed to play Swamps first with a double black 2-drop, just in case. But because the double black 2-drop is removal, it doesn't matter that much, because it's going to be insanely rare to play a 2-mana removal spell turn 2 on the play. Like, the odds of them playing a 1-drop that's that good are just monumentally low. Super free attack. Um, I don't think I immediately discard Deep Analysis here, because I can still just play it next turn and that'll be solid. Oh, that's a good draw. Um, yeah, I think with that as the draw, I'll just hold here. I'm not going to just a Cursed Marauder, a Tempest Harvester. That's my only other line. Right, yeah, I'll Aether Spike the Visionary, keep them off some extra card selection. It's a draw plus a Scry 2, it's pretty reasonable. Pretty powerful. Grim Servants. Sort of interested in playing that instead of Deep Analysis then. Finding one of our consuming things. So I'm open to discarding the Deep Analysis if they block for the turn. If they don't block, we... Hope for one. The card advantage is more than enough. I don't need to stack up the damage yet. Cool.
Army of Jealous Thirst, the Death Toucher on the ground. They can double block Grim Servants. And they kill it no matter what I kill with Consuming Corruption. So I would have to Consuming Corruption three attacks here. Yeah, let's just Corruption the, um, the Kami. And then the whole team gets to jam in. Looks good. Draw another card. The Psychic Frog has just gotten so much mileage here. We draw into a perfect 3-drop to play, try to guarantee the 6th land for the Shadow. And that is the 6th land. There's an Aether Spike as well we can hold up post-Shadow. Looks great to me. Long as I play this in the pre-combat main phase so that it triggers at the beginning of the post-combat main phase so that we untap after the post-combat main phase then it'll be good Two to the top with the Visionaries, so they like what they see. Alright, here we go. Shadow of the Second Sun. Go, team, go. I have drawn three extra cards off of this thing. I am more than comfortable with discarding three when one of them has flashback. Again. Oh my god, what a draw. I can unfathomable truths and still hold up Aether Spike. Oh, Fiomancer. If I spike that, they're dead because they're tapped out. I forgot to unfathomable truths first, but it doesn't matter. Lethal on board. Find the kill, and we are 4 and 1, heading into round number 6. Oh my god, we can't stop drawing the Psychic Frog. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. Our um, Consuming Corruption is kind of weak in this hand, but that's fine. I've got the Psychic Frog. Discard the Sneaky Snacker. I've got the Deep Analysis. Um, to immediately get back the Sneaky Snacker on the next turn, which is huge. The Etched Slith versus the Frog to remove its counters is kind of annoying. If they don't just kill the Psychic Frog with some kind of removal spell anyway. So, I guess we're actually hoping to just Corruption the Slith next turn. Instead of Deep Analysis. Is that worth it? It probably is, actually. Huh. <laughs> What do we do about this? Hmm. I have no idea what you do in the mirror. Do you attack into it? Do you hold off? When we attack in, right, we have more cards than them. But then theirs is going to keep drawing them cards. I mean, we just both keep drawing cards and... <laughs> See who goes farther into Magical Christmas Land? I suppose that's where we're at. I 
they play an accursed marauder here or something that's gonna be such a big bummer so i don't want to like over commit into discarding everything to this immediately you know what it might be in the mirror match it might be whoever's on the play wins because if we were on the play we'd have four mana right now and we could hold up aether spike after this corruption which would be massive or i could have deep analysis and corruption yeah we would have had an insane turn here with four mana We cannot corruption the Psychic Frog profitably at all. It just doesn't do anything. So we just corruption the Slith here while they're tapped out. Makes them discard like one card. But that card can really easily be a Snacker or a Flashbacker or the Transmigrant thing that comes back from Grave. There's so much it could be. Alright, here we go. Frog v. Frog. Fourth mana. Hard removal. And that wins, because we can't deal with their frog without hard removal. I can discard the Snacker so I can deep analysis for two next turn and hold up an Aether Spike alongside it. I guess I do. That here. Just so I can deep analysis and aether spike next turn, because we need to dig for removal for the frog. And this is the only way I can deep analysis and hold up spike. These are not removal for the frog, but the Riddle Keeper to tap it is something. I already cracked my colorless source, though. If I drew one this game... Oh, I didn't draw a colorless source this game, I lied. Yeah, no, I, it, I think it literally is what I said before of just... <laughs> Whoever's on the play wins the mirror, because remember the line that I said that we would have with four mana there? Of, um, it's only counter unless they pay two, so they just pay for it. Gross, yeah. The line I said of removal and hold up Aether Spike, that would have potentially stopped their Breathe Your Last. I think they had just four mana when they cast the Breathe Your Last, because this turn they have five. Yeah, so we could have countered Breathe Your Last unless they paid two and kept the frog on board and on from there. But and this is now pretty insurmountable. Still going to play it out and see what happens, but I don't see how we turn this around against the frog from here. Our deck also basically only has the damage-based removal out of black, so we really just don't have good ways to deal with a resolved frog. There's the colorless source. It's actually pretty big. I don't know if it's the best draw in our deck, but it's certainly up there. Yep, there's the call me. Insight, draw two, bring the snacker right back. Trigger the call me as well. Zero mana drain for what, three? Drain for two. None of these cards do that much right now. 
So everything's basically just a draw one anyway. Ugh, I missed my opportunity. I have to play this main phase one for some reason. Even though it doesn't untap things until basically the end step. Oh! Well, never mind. I was gonna say, I think I need to just shadow, attack, and untap. Just draw my one card, but set up the most potential card draw for later. Can't do that if I play it post combat. Misplayed it again. It's just so instinctual. Like when it doesn't actually untap anything until after that second main phase, why can't I just cast it in that second main phase? It doesn't do anything yet. I'm frustrated. I do not like the design of that at all. But again, even though I'm making the exact same punt this game, I think it's just another game where, yeah, shit, it doesn't matter. You got their Kerbomination. We were on the mirror match, except they had a better second bomb than us. They have Kerbomination instead of Shadow of the Second Sun. I would take that in a heartbeat. Here we are for game seven, and if I have to look at this card one more time, I'm going to have an aneurysm, but it's letting me look at Psychic Frog just as much, which is probably worth it. Actually, Psychic Frog is so good, I don't think I play the Transmigrant here. I still play the Black Source, in case I hit the double black card. Although if I hit the double black card, I don't have the second Swamp anyway, never mind. Um, but yeah, I think I actually just saved the Transmigrant for our Psychic Frog. Instead of playing it as a 1-1, just to get it higher out of reach of removal. Okay, we need to top deck a Swamp for this Consuming Corruption. That is the opposite of a Swamp. So I can't Psychic Frog at all here. We just hold up an Aether Spike. I mean, I can trade Nightshade, draw it into the Frog, discarding a Transmigrant. It's not the end of the world, but we're so close to Corruptioning the Dryad. I just hold off for that. Disgusting! All right, well, I'm going to counter that. Still nasty, because even if you counter it, they get all the spawns. And that holds Psychic Frog off from ever drawing us a card. Huge. I guess they have to... We make them get rid of a spawn here by attacking with Frog, so Frog's still putting in a little work, since the Dryad's tapped here. You. This is why we're on nine swamps and only six islands. Stranger things have happened. But it's a bummer draw. Get in there. Nope. Instead, we're going to be hanging out with the Eldrazi spawn. Alright, we're just going to slam down a Dark Souls protagonist now. Whenever our opponent allows damage. They're holding us hostage on this one. It's not happening. They regret everything. How could they do this to poor Gary? Oh, he's gone. Alright, let's connive a little bit. Have some super secret evil plans here, and the evil plans is top deck a swamp. There we go. The plans have worked. However, it might be late enough that they just kill the Psychic Frog before we actually get through with it. We'll see. It is turn four. Plus, they have a spawn. And a Dryad. 
They have six mana here. It that heralds the end is the play. Horrific Assault on Skurla Sentry instead of Psychic Frog. I will take that. That is a-okay with me. I guess I really am running out of cards to use with the frog, but that deep analysis helps a lot there. So I can discard two, and this is a three, four. So even if they double block it with the it and the spawn, it will survive. So I can corrupt the dryad. I guess we actually want a deep analysis before we declare the attack here. So the Psychic Frog can actually overkill the blockers if we need to. Pre-combat main phase. Pre-combat main phase. Pre-combat main phase. Just going through some learning exercises real quick, just in case. I could fly here. It might be worth it since we just like kill a spawn. That's interesting. Was not expecting that, but I'm perfectly happy here. Hi. <laughs> I might do some things real quick. I mean, probably not, though, right? Because we top deck one land and then shadow into unfathomable truths is insane card draw. Yeah. We're not ditching shadow. Much as I want to. If we win this game, maybe I'll cut it in between rounds. <laughs> Goodbye, both of you. And then we pass the turn. Yeah, actually, when I made that, um, that damage, I was like, I guess I only kill one of these. But then I was like, no, if I kill the it, I just remembered... The uh, toughness gets reduced post-combat, and I actually do kill both of them, so pretty good. Let's go. Free combat main phase. Look who knows how to play magic again for about one second. We We begin again. This is going to be our best shot of the second sun game, because not only are we like decently stable here, but we have the huge instant speed card draw and the instant speed transmigrant going around. We have the instant speed transmigrant plus marauder combo. So next turn I can like sack the transmigrant to the marauder, then untap all my mana to bring the transmigrant back again. Like we we're really set up right now. Show me a good combat trick, or trade your meddler into two lands. Even if Psychic Frog dies here, because of the shadow, we're pretty ahead. So I'm going to put Psychic Frog at a little bit of risk here. Beautiful. That's actually comedy. Alright. <laughs> they did the exact same misplay we did like 15 times. Maybe it actually wasn't a misplay for them. Because if they did that pre-combat, I would have known that they didn't have any tricks. So there is that kind of aspect to think about. Begin. Crack 
crack some landscapes. And then untap all the lands they just pulled out. That's going to be cool. Glaring Flesh Raker. I can actually counter that. I don't really need to, though, so I'm not going to. They're on all lands now. They are out of stuff. So Shadow's got to hit some good stuff here. Feeling pretty set up. No way to add to the damage right now. Yeah, we just send in the board. Three for five, plus five. Yeah, we can't lethal, so I'm not going to discard anything. They're down to eight. Draw another card. Consuming Corruption, beautiful. There's the scurryless one. Call me. Drain them immediately. Shields are down for one phase here, but then I untap everything. Cool. The spike is back up. Annoyed Altasaur. So it cascades even if I counter it. So we see what they cascade into first, and that is weaker, so that resolves, and the Altasaur does not. And there's the concession from our opponent. Well, a Shadow of the Second Sun was pretty incredible in that game. We had a lot of instants and the reanimation stuff to do with the transmigrant and stuff, so... I guess we keep the deck the same for all of the pain and struggles that I have had with the Shadow of the Second Sun. We'll leave it in because it has now brought us to that victory. I mean, Crazy Frog brought us to the victory. The Psychic Frog won us the game more than the Shadow did, but it was still very strong, the Shadow, um, in that one. So I'll leave it in no matter what it has brought us to the point where we're in the money, leaving this draft with more gems than we paid to enter. So pretty happy with whatever happens from here, but we'll see if we can't keep it up. Maybe try to fight for a trophy run as we are 5-2 and two, heading into game 8. Here we are on the play for game 8. I don't actually like this hand that much because the Riddle Keeper is basically a mulligan. Uh, but... What is going on? Uh, I was going to say turn four onwards real good, and the Marauder slows down our opponent to help us get to that turn four. Oh yeah, we're going to Marauder that Fanatic for sure. They can recast it from Grave, which isn't great for us, recasting it as a 4-4, but making sure they can't ramp up and don't have the four toughness blocker here is quite a big deal. Play the black sources first so that our black removal spells get as big as possible as quick as possible. Okay, we're definitely going to play a scurryless sentry this turn, but post combat to have all the psychic frog flexibility. Okay, tune the narrative. We're not doing that right now. the landscape for the Riddle Keeper, but I don't have anything to sack to it yet. This is a lot of mana. We might discard a land here. Try to get both casts out of Deep Analysis. Because if I don't draw anything that affects the board next turn, I can just hard cast Deep Analysis instead of doing anything else. Yeah, I am going to ditch a land on this. Even though Sentry doesn't get a counter if we discard a land. That just feels like what we have access of. I mean, I guess I could discard Tune the Narrative. Doesn't do a lot, but I can Analysis plus Tune. I'm 
mono green from our opponent so far. Probably... They probably aren't playing mono green, but who knows? Maybe they are. There's Fnatic. Come on, let's find interaction to deal with that thing before it taps for four green mana. Please? I guess I can just Riddle Keeper it down. We might have to do that, sacking the sentry. Be a little bit of a bummer, but probably worth it in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, if we just draw another deep analysis. Three mana to emerge, because sentry's four mana? Well, that's pretty good. Do I attack with sentry first? No, because then I don't really get frog in. Unless I exile three from grave, so I'd have to discard things pre-combat. Yeah, no. Alright, they are green-blue. They are two-color. Territory color. That is massive, and it has reach. So now I need multiple removal spells. We gotta get the Kohler out of the way. We gotta get the 4-4 out of the way. There's the utter insignificance for the Kohler. And it's good enough for now. You know, I don't even think I send the frog into the sky here. Or Exile with Insignificance. I think I Deep Analysis and Insignificance this turn. Oh, Sneaky Snacker for when we draw three on a future turn, and there's Consuming Corruption. We need to find one more black source, but I can landscape towards it because I don't need the colorless anymore. We've already cast our Riddle Keeper. So yeah, that's the removal for the 4-4. Four -four. It is going to give them a huge mana surge this turn, though. Play another giant card. Nope, just Adapt. All the brood scales, that's fine. I've got more than enough engraved to just attack exclusively in the sky from this point on. We've got a great game plan and they're real low. We might even be attacking for lethal next turn. Yeah, there's propagator drone, still nothing to block flyers. I have to make psychic frog 7 power? Feels unlikely, but possible? No, that's 100% possible because of deep analysis. We're just going to hit them with a gigantic frog? And kill them next turn, because they can't block anybody. Alright, end step, we 100% discard Snacker. I mean, I guess I can just do it later, but whatever. There's the Transmigrants. Value. Go to our turn. We can Deep Analysis ourselves and get the Snacker back. Discard a bunch of cards, send the frog into the sky, and our opponent is super dead. One, two, three. That's a flying frog. Four more discards. Here is one. Here is two. Here's three. And here's four. For 12 in the sky. That is six and two officially heading into the final battle with our frog companion. Actually, literally playing like a companion, as if it's just been in our opener every single game. Don't even have to spend the three to put it in our hand. All right, here we are for the final battle. Our opponent is on the play. We're on a two lander, but Tempest Harvester can try to dig for lands if we get stuck here. I don't love it, but I think it's definitely not a mulligan. 
Especially on the draw, we have another draw step towards mana. Playing against the blue deck. Mm, it's going to be hard to hold up these Aether Spikes instead of playing these really good two drops. Specifically the Harvester being the really good one. Like, if I don't hit a land here, I don't think I can afford to not... Yeah, I can't just not play Harvester towards drawing more lands. I need to hit my lands on curve, and Harvester is the best way to guarantee I do that. So if they destroy us with a great four drop, they destroy us with a great four drop. But it's so much more likely we need to cycle towards mana. And there you go. Guess I'll die. Oh, wow. On the plus side, we were screwed either way. Because if I didn't... Oh, my God. Yeah, if I didn't play Harvester here, I'd be miles away from land three. Probably have to just hold up Aether Spikes multiple turns in a row, so I'm actually on Dream Drinker Vampires, the discard. Because if we start hitting lands in a row later, Truth leads into the Riddle Keeper. Actually, Aether Spikes don't even work against this Path of Annihilation nonsense, because they already have like 10 mana. Yeah, they can just sack a spawn, and then the Aether Spike doesn't do anything. I guess I can make them sack both spawns, so at least they don't have those Eldrazi towards mana. Oh wait, no, I actually have extra energy from the Harvester, which would then mean that I can't... Oh god, that would mean I can't draw discard anymore? Oh boy. Oh boy. Please. I beg of you. There we go. I mean, I guess I could have let that resolve because I have the Accursed Marauder. How likely is Aether Spike to counter something next turn? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 mana. I'm going to give that a solid 0%. Let's drop Mindless Conscription here. I don't know why I didn't attack with Harvester, though. That was dumb. They should be at 22 right now. Dig for the Eldrazi. Hey, Chris. How you doing? Been a while? Uh, grab like a two drop here. I actually grab a land off Grim Servant. Oh, shoot. I should have a cursed Marauder. I am <laughs> punting all over this game. All oh, right. I can get Psychic Frog. It's probably too late for him, but I think he's cooler than a land, so we'll grab our Psychic Frog anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely too late for him if they play any other non-token. I, I think I just punted the game away, because I totally forgot that Marauder was just going to kill the Chrysalis. I just saw all the Eldrazi spawn in the universe, and immediately my mind defaulted back to they'll just sack an Eldrazi spawn, even though probably 10 seconds before that I remembered that this would kill the chrysalis yeah no i think i probably punted this one away it that heralds the end is bad for us but without that chrysalis beating down we'd still have a shot I 100% think that playing the Harvester turn 2 was the right play over holding up Aether Spike, so the fact that they crushed us with Path of Annihilation, it just is what it is. I don't think it was wrong to not play around that. Okay, so even if I had a Cursed Marauder here, they would still have the It That Heralds the End, this 4-4 four, four Flyer, 5-1-2 Spawns. Yeah, we're still in a real bad spot. Um, 
I don't, I'm going to be fully honest with you right now. I don't really want to play this out for like a 1% chance of victory. This is too much brain energy. Yeah, I mean, we scurl a sentry. Definitely don't. Cursed Marauder here. We can't block the Shapeshifter, so we're taking 4, going to 10. Uh, I guess we don't die that slowly. I can play this out. It should probably only take like 5 minutes to die at least. Gatekeeper could be very, very bad for me if they have another Wandering Chrysalis or Spawn Gang or something. Oh! We're actually going to die real quick. All right, I mean, this is the magical Christmas land, Eldrazi deck. They had probably one of their most explosive ramp curve outs possible, and we had one of our worst curve outs. We kept the two lander on the draw with card draw from Tempest Harvester and still missed really bad on the mana early so one of the best starts their deck's capable of versus one of the worst starts our deck is capable of and we're gonna lose this one no matter what but i also played real bad because i had an opportunity to kill a chrysalis that i didn't take the servant tutor was also probably wrong i was also probably just supposed to get another piece of removal then we could kill this it thing here that would have bought us more time so in theory we could have dealt with chrysalis and it that heralds the end if we played perfectly but i'd still be taking five right now well four right now this wouldn't have the it buff and they'd still have vanguard with all this and then i wouldn't have a way to deal with vanguard and yeah i mean i wouldn't be dying like immediately anymore but i would still be losing oh wait i just <laughs> i just whatever all right <laughs> i just under blocked I needed to block two spawns to not die, and I could have done that with a 3-3 three, three and a 4-4, four, four, or a 3-4. As you can tell, I mean, once they just explode started me into Chrysalis, I already shut the brain off. It's over. It's over. It could have been played much tighter, and we could have died on a much later turn, but we still would have died, and we are 6-3 and three for 1,800 gems and 5 packs as the final prize out. Super happy with how I drafted today. Getting past a Psychic Frog is about as clear a signal as you can get that at least the one player directly to your right is going to give you all the blue-black stuff. So I think that's a huge reason to lock in on the color pair. And that's what we did. It was a pretty simple draft where we stuck to that color pair. We took the best cards for that archetype. I'm really happy with the double deep analysis that we got late. Really happy that I took them really highly, like pack one, pick one. Or sorry, pack three, pick one on one of these to really get the deck working because these were some of the best cards in the deck to synergize with the frog the snacker and the conscription which are our strongest cards the shadow of the second sun was objectively quite strong in this deck i just really misplayed with it a few times because it's such a confusingly worded card um and so even though it frustrates me and i don't personally enjoy the card a ton because of the strange frustrating wording of everything um, I think it's objectively like a good card in the deck and we probably should have drafted and played it. Um, but that's still probably like my least favorite card in here. Yeah, I don't think there's anything in here that's terrible. Biggest overperformer goes to Psychic Frog, even though we already knew it was insane. We just drew it all the time and it was completely insane. Just a very, very solid deck overall. Um, that's... Uh, doesn't quite make it to the seven win run due to a little bit of rough draws, a little bit of variance, and a little bit of user error. Definitely made a couple misplays in probably all of our losses, but for sure the very last loss. But we'll take that super up in the value at 1,800 gems and five extra packs of prize out. 
But that's going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and you're interested in seeing some more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.